right, streaming on YouTube. And record on this computer. And then we will disable the waiting room. See who shows up. Welcome, if you are joining on YouTube, I am Greg Dunn. I am the Game Dev Coach. This is a weekly call I do every so often, or not a weekly call. Um, this is the free call I do every so often to help people with game development problems they have. I don't know who's gonna show up, what they're gonna need help with, but I'm gonna try. So uh, I've got several people that I think are interested, and as long as I put the right Zoom link in, so we'll see. See who shows up. And here we go. All right, checking on YouTube. Looks to be working fine. Looks like you got the nose scratch and everything. That's exciting. All right, can mute for a moment till anybody shows up. I'm sorry. Unmuted, resuming. All right. We're here. We're waiting. So 39 people got the email. We will see if anybody shows up. Now, in the future, if you want to get on one of these, go to thegamedevcoach.com. And right now, it's on the front page to go straight. And uh, you can sign up to grab a spot. It is too late to get into today's call. That's already gone out to the people that responded to the post in the group or the people that had signed up previously for the calls. But the best way to get notified about upcoming calls is go to thegamedevcoach.com and click that big purple sign up now under the grab your spot. Now, it does have a countdown to the call that just started, but the next time a call happens, that is the way you will get notified. So somebody is sending me a thing that is not important. New text message, also not important. So this is just kind of me doing a thing until somebody shows up. So I am also running a game dev boot camp right now at thegamedevcoach.com forward slash boot camp. Um, that's pretty cool. We're in our second week. Um, build and publish your first game in four weeks, even if you've never coded before. Um, it is a boot camp. It's a little more intensive. It's not just a, you know, a simple three-day challenge. There's a lot more involved in that. Um, but it's going well so far. I think that uh, everybody who's been doing it has been enjoying it. And um, they've, been, they've been learning stuff. Uh, we've had two lessons so far. And so each week we do a lesson on Monday morning, and then we do a follow-up call currently on Tuesday nights. And so uh, if you have trouble implementing Monday's lesson, you come to the follow-up call on Tuesday. And there you go. That is how it happens. So, but yeah, everybody uh, seems to be enjoying it. So that's good. And we'll see. Let's see how it goes. I have not live streamed on YouTube before. I've certainly not live streamed one of these calls before. So uh, kind of killing time to see if anybody shows up, but um, several people were interested, so that's good. Just going to double check the Zoom link I put in place. That does look to be the right one. All right. I guess nobody's interested. Actually, it's, I don't think it's ever that anyone is not interested. It's that people are busy and I don't give a lot of notice for this. So it ends up being um, short notice and um, at least one person said they were interested. They just couldn't do it right then. So, and I get that. I, I do. I don't always give a lot of notice. I mean, that's a little bit kind of by design. Um, if I had 800 people show up, I would not be able to help anybody with their individual issues. The reason I do these calls, though, and I go and post in the Unity Developers Facebook group, um, I post in the, uh, there's a community for uh, people who teach Unity uh, in a, everything from uh, traditional educational settings, schools, and things like that, 
to people like me teaching on YouTube and, and running game dev boot camps. Um, a lot of those folks are, they just don't have a ton of unity experience, but they're doing their very best to try to teach that to high school kids and, and stuff like that. And that's awesome. There's some people uh, teach college classes in there. Uh, one gentleman's come a couple of times. He's, he's a fun guy to talk to because he's, he's uh, been around a while like me uh, with gray beard here. Um, but yeah, so I, I just like doing these calls. I've been doing programming my whole life, 40 years. I've been doing it professionally for 25. Um, okay, so I, you know, I haven't been doing it professionally since I was 15. <laughs> I'm 48. So I started when I was eight, been doing it for 40 years, uh, doing it professionally 25 years. Um, did a lot of database stuff uh, for a long time uh, in the 90s and Macromedia Director and Flash and different other technologies that just aren't around anymore. And uh, when I saw Unity and the App Store both around the same time, um, I was like, yep, that is that is the thing for me. So over the last 12 years, um, I've worked in a whole bunch of different projects with Unity. I've done personal projects. I've done small projects. I've done big projects. I've done non-game apps. I've done several of those. I started a company based around non-game apps built in Unity. Why built in Unity, you might say. Why would you use Unity for a non-game app? And it's a good question uh, with a good answer. One, we wanted it to look exactly like the designer specified. And especially when we were doing this six years ago, that was really hard to do with native. Two, very short time frame. We had 45, we, I, I, I had 45 days from the initial go to when apps needed to be launched because there was a specific window. And three, um, because these apps needed to basically run and work and look the same on iOS and Android, um, much to the frustration of Android users, uh, sorry. Um, it didn't really look like an iOS app or an Android app. It just looked like our app. Uh, it was pretty cool. It was, uh, we called it the company Sideline Access. And the idea was to bring college quality high school athletics to high college quality athletic apps to high schools at no cost to the school. And we did it. We disrupted an industry. Um, it was pretty cool. Uh, I left there a couple of years ago. There were no more interesting problems to solve. I and mean, we'd gotten acquired and moved all of the stuff off my systems to other people's systems and other people got calls on Friday nights uh, when the database wasn't working. Um, yeah, that's nice. It, it's tough being the only programmer for something that has a lot of demand at certain times of the week. And since we were doing high school athletics, Friday night, lots of schools were streaming. We had a streaming WOWS server and schools would stream to that and then that would feed the app. Um, it's pretty cool though. I mean, at the peak when I left, I think we had 50 schools uh, streaming their Friday night football games um, every Friday night during uh, football season. And of course they also streamed, uh, you know, volleyball and basketball and all kinds of other sports. And they, and even for the ones that didn't stream, like, you know, I don't know that anybody wants to watch golf through a high school sports app. I know people watch golf on TV and people play golf and golf is cool, I guess. Uh, I'm not a golfer, clearly. But um, we still had places for that in the app. We still had places for skeet shooting because that is a high school sport in some places. And um, golf and all the different things um, we would still put in the scores. And so you could get news about this, the uh, news about individual sports. You'd go into a sports section and see just the volleyball news and just the volleyball schedules. Uh, just the upcoming volleyball events and the upcoming streams and stuff like that. It would show the results the next day. It's a really cool set of apps. We had um, a bunch of apps running off, a bunch of apps and one app that had uh, several hundred schools in it. That was a national app, all running off Unity um, beautifully off one code base. It was uh it was a really neat thing to be a part of. Um, I'm really, really glad I, I was a part of that. It was a tough gig um, being the only programmer, you know, 12, 16, even 20 and 22 hour days, not exaggerating happened. 
And, uh, but, uh, you know, when you're part of startup and you're part of whether that thing lives or dies, uh, fails or succeeds, do what you got to do. But that's a young man's game. And I'm clearly not a young man anymore. I wasn't when I started. But, oh, good. We've got somebody. I can stop talking. Hi, Beth. Welcome to the free game dev help call. We are streaming on YouTube, so bear that in mind if you want to share a project or anything. Uh, happy for you to unmute. And if you have a question, a specific problem, or anything else I can help with, I'm happy to try. I don't know if this is anything that you can help with, especially in a short time period. But I did the carding micro game um, and I played through one of the live sessions and at the end of it, there were like 45 compiler errors and it would not let me do, run a build. And it was all directly as a result of something they did during that live session. So the computer I was on died. I, transported it all to my new computer and now I have 210 compiler errors and I'm I just I don't even know where to start sure um off the top of my head the main thing I can think of that would cause something like that would be the platform like if they were developing for iOS and you're set to you know Windows or if they were set for you know Windows and you're set to WebGL or something like that do you know if that's I'm I'm just trying to publish via WebGL just to get it onto you know my unity page so I can use it as a demonstration with my kids uh -huh. but if you know if they're not going to and and there's barracuda uh is a lot of the new errors. It has something about Barracuda and Google and all these new errors or something like missing a uh, missing a using directive or an assembly reference. Yeah. Um, and this is a, is this a Unity supplied project? Carding? Yes, it is. Can you, can you post a, uh, a link to that in the chat or, or if you're on the computer with those Unity errors, can you share the screen? I can absolutely share my screen. Let me set that up. Um, directive type errors, stuff like that. It sounds like there's a, what's called a DLL, which stands for dynamic link library, or that's what we called them. I think they're still called that. Basically it's a library. And again, it goes back to kind of the build settings. And a lot of times it's going to be a different, um, a different kind of build setting. All right, Barracuda, okay, ML agents. So machine learning. Um, uh, okay, so were they building for WebGL? Uh, honestly, I, I don't even know that they got to the build in this video. There were a lot of uh, I don't see where all my stuff is either. Like all of my. It doesn't look like, uh, so click on the project tab near the bottom, maybe. Let's see. I mean, Over on, I can't uh, see at the middle of the screen my... uh, on the left side. I can't. Project. I need that. So I think you're, I think you're just in the sample scene and you're not in the right scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this isn't, this is the first time I've opened Unity on this computer. So my stuff isn't set up how I normally, how uh -huh. I normally like it. My scene isn't there. Okay, this is the, well, we're in the sample scene, but I don't think that's the one. So it's not going to be in packages. Uh, it's going to be something under assets. Well, see, I opened, I just imported this project. Gotcha. Okay. As a package. And that's why I'm, I don't even know if I know where my stuff is. Can I um, request remote control of the screen? Yes. See if that works. It should prompt you to allow me. All right. Let's see. I am not familiar with this particular project, but... Um, so I know, generally speaking, the, the machine learning stuff, um, which is what the ML is, 
require usually requires some extra um, some extra stuff, some some Python and stuff like that sometimes to run at all. What what? Well, the first my first concern is my scene isn't here. Yeah, I don't see that either. Uh, why don't you try to? I'll, I'll give up remote control. Why don't you try to re-import uh, that package if you can do that? Um, what I did is I just, just double click did this. That works fine. All right. All assets from this package are already in your project. Uh, did you export this package yourself or is this the package from? Uh, no, I exported it myself after I, you know, made all these changes. Yeah. Looks like you may not have included the scene. Um, yeah, I can, do you know what the scene was called? You could search for it there. Cart. All right. I do not. I will have, I reckon I, well, I guess I have just wasted your time in that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hang on. Hang on. I'm pulling up the carting micro game uh, template myself. The computer it was on, um, quit working properly. So that was why I forwarded it to this one. That's no good. Um, just curious. I'm just looking at the documentation. Okay. Uh, this says you need to have WebGL build support. I do. S installed okay so let's and i did on the old computer okay uh but we're not in webgl mode right now that could be part of the problem see at the top where it says uh carding micro game sample scene pc mac and linux standalone yeah so we need to go to file and build settings and switch to webgl and then switch platform that could be the whole issue well, and I did that on the, the old computer and it still wouldn't let me um, build it because all the compiler, compiler errors had to be resolved before I could build it. Right. All right. But at least we're on the right platform now. Uh, let's see what else we got. Looks like. I don't see anything that they... Okay, there's a lot more stuff. I'm just looking at the carding project, the carding micro game project on the asset store. There's a lot more folders um, than, than you've got here. Do you want to, um, why don't we try to re-import either into this or a completely new project, re-import the carding micro game uh, project itself and just see if we can get it well, right. What I'm concerned about is it built fine early on. It was only after that last video that I got compiler errors. I probably need I probably need to try and get that other computer up and running enough to 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 look at it in there and maybe re repackage it and resend it. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I don't think I don't think since my scenes are gone, I don't think that I'm going to re be reproducing the problem, and I. You know, and I don't know why I'm getting all these errors now, 210 of them. Well, um, just say that. Yeah, that let me let me try. Re let me try opening the new one. And. Uh, yeah, it, it looks like you don't have the whole, um, you know, Unity micro game project imported because I'm just looking at the package contents and there's a lot more files, yeah. scripts, animations, audios, and you've got to have all that stuff. Um, yeah, sometimes if you pick your scene itself and export it, then it will work, um, but not always. I just want to see if that makes a difference. Yeah, I don't know that it's going to. Yeah, no, it's not. There's. 
there's pieces of the underlying cart um, package that are not there. So yeah, you're going to get all kinds of errors. I don't know if that's the reason those errors are there or not, um, but that's definitely not going to help. So yeah, why don't we try importing the whole um, package initially again, and then re-import your assets on top of that. Just make sure it's not showing a password. <laughs> okay, good. So what uh, grade level do you teach? Uh, 10 through 12. Okay, very good. My wife's a teacher. So oh, okay. She teaches. Where uh, are my assets? Uh, if you click the little um, download button right in, under the asset store, um, in the asset store tab, there's a little like a it's like a clipboard with a down arrow. Yep, right there. There's your assets. I don't think I want to abandon this and and and. Okay. Yeah, it's always good to start with a clean slate, and that helps remove some of the some of the variables. How long have you been uh, working with Unity or, 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 and or teaching it? Well, I, I teach game design and we use Game Maker, an old version, um, Game Maker for Mac from like a long time ago. Huh? But I typically do um, at least a Unity project with my kids each year. We typically build a solar system model. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we'll do like the rollerball game or the box shooter or whatever. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, Unity's, uh, I love, I love working with Unity. I've been using it for 12 mm. years now. Um, I love it, but my problem is I don't have the time to devote to it that I need to, right. you know, to get to where I understand everything. Yeah, it takes a while. It does, it does. You know, I'm going to do the same thing that you're doing. I'm going to start a new project and import that. Really frustrated that my package did not include all of my stuff. Yeah. If you export the scene theoretically, that's usually what I pick to export. Theoretically, it'll grab everything it needs, but there, if there are things that are being grabbed through the code and stuff, then it, it just doesn't. It doesn't scan quite that deep, at least the last time I looked. And so it doesn't, you just kind of have to select like everything in the project and, and right click and export. Yeah. And that that might help. Oh, I mean, that doesn't help right now. Hope you can get that other computer working again. I know how frustrating that is though. I do, I do. Let me mute that. All the Discord chats. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we use for esports. Okay. Very cool. So 
So importing this package, does that bring you to the starting point and then you go through and follow the... Uh... There's basically a broken version of the game that some of the tracks are out of place and you have to move the track. I mean, it's a very intro level course, which is why I wanted to start with it with my kids. But, you know, when I wasn't even able to show them my, my demo because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't export it or I couldn't build it. I was like, maybe I don't need to be showing them this because I want something that they can build and be able to show off. And I thought I just needed that. Set it to do not disturb and I don't think it'll ping you anymore. All right. That's another problem. There's so many, so much software that I use. It's like I have a little bit of a grasp on how to use all of it, but I don't know how to use any of it well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm familiar with that struggle as well. Yeah, luckily my kids, I can ask them how to do stuff on Discord and they can they can tell me when I need to. Yep, yep. So if this works, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get that old computer running enough to try and, and package it again and send the package to this computer and see if I can at least get it to the point where I had it. Yeah. Because I, I thought I was at the point, you know, where I was having the build errors, but now I'm, I'm apparently way behind that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I am not so far removed from it to remember the frustration of there's a thousand errors and I don't know what any of them mean. Yeah. I just want it to work. I just want to try it out. I just want to do like the video showed. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what was frustrating is because in the video, when they got to the end, the guys realized they had all these errors, but they never told us how to fix any of them. Great. Hmm. It was one of the live ones that was recorded. Yeah. What is Unity from Barracuda? Oh, uh, I wonder if that has to do with CUDA, like. Um, Barracuda is a lightweight cross-platform neural network inference library. Okay. Um, I wonder if you have to install Barracuda in the package manager. That's probably going to be the case. All right. Um, yeah, see if you can open a scene and just Try. Do you remember what I clicked to get rid of this extra window here? There's a, a single window. Yep. Yes, ma'am. So click the little three dots over on the side on the right ha. side. Ha, mm -hmm. thank you. One column layout. That's my All right. <laughs> okay. So I'm mostly back to how I like my setup. So I was doing that while I was importing. Okay, now. Much better. Okay, so. Their sample scene, the sample scene isn't in here either. Um, maybe. I'll just, I'll just have to go back and look at it from that other computer. I thought I had it where I could look at it from here, but, I'm but I obviously happy. don't. I'm happy to uh, see what we can do here. You know, let's see. You know. I do these calls, uh, you know, I try to help whoever shows up for however long they show up. I'm, you know. Yeah, but I, I don't have my content here. So, oh, there's the, there's the, yeah, the main scene. Which one do we start with? Do you know? Is it? I the, think it's the main scene main? Is, is the one. Yeah, that's it. Uh, See, you, that's the one that I edited to. Uh, console, console window. Can I have the. Oh, I normally have it down by my game. Okay. 
does it run at all? Oops, here, I'll, I'll, I'll let you. I don't even see where it is. No, I'll just see if it runs. I'll start there. There you go. So yeah, I think what you were running into is that it, it just didn't pull everything. Um, now, yeah. if you re-import your package, that should pull some of the changes in. Now, it may not change the Yeah, system. because it was only one console error preventing me from building. I mean, there were a lot of the little yellow triangles, but there was only one console error preventing me from building. Right. So... so would you would you click on the packages the little arrow uh next to packages and pull that you know click that so we can see what the packages yeah, are heater yeah okay so that's got a lot more packages yeah it uh, didn't have i know it didn't have that in there i'm pretty sure yeah I, I think that's the issue so i noticed on my end um that it said you know hey do you want me to update the packages and import import the packages that are that are needed um, so you might be able to just import Barracuda, but it looks like there's a variety of packages that are needed for this to run. I wonder if I could, well, I'm just going to repackage it from the old computer and resend it to myself and try and move on from there. If you repackage it and then open that in this project, it yeah. should only overwrite the things you've changed with your changes. And okay. then should be good to go, I think. Okay, I'll try doing that. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Hope it helped. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. And we're back to just me. Four people watching now. I hope that was interesting. I am here for another 32 minutes. I am going to keep talking about Unity and game development and programming. I am checking the emails and stuff to see if anybody else hopped on or tried to. Doesn't look like it, so that's good. I am happy to, I mean, you know, the time is allocated, so... This is what I'm doing. Uh, nope, don't see anything else that needs to happen just at the moment here. So that's good. That, go back over here. La, la, la. Uh, I, I don't know why I'm singing. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's what I do. Checking my stats again. Um, I almost narrated. I'm drinking some water, but obviously you're watching. You can tell. So um, while I wait for another person to come on, if anybody else does come on, uh, I will go back to YouTube to see if anybody had any questions or comments. Hopefully that was helpful for Beth. Um, that looks like a really neat project. Um, I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to dig into that a little bit because there is a whole uh, string of kind of I guess there's some live streams, but then there's a bunch of different things you can do and mod to add a hat or add bouncy sparkles or custom triggers, and it really looks like a neat project. Um, and if you just look up carting with a K, carting micro game, you will find it. So one game that I am working on, or one game that I've been thinking about for a while, is uh, that I'm going to start working on soon, is called, well, I don't know what it's called yet. Um, it's going to be a game where you... Um, like a, like a pet rescue. And now, you know, if you, 
if you go look up like pet rescue saga you're gonna find or even you know pet rescue game you're gonna find candy crush but with pets by the same people and that's not at all what i have in mind um i'm gonna make something my my thought was there's um you know sometimes you see areas that are flooded and there's like a rooftop and there's people, you know, waiting to be rescued or um, I'm thinking pets. There's pets on these rooftops that have gotten up to the roof that are waiting to be rescued. You're a boat, you're driving along, you're trying to get to the, you know, pull up to the roof, um, get the pets on board somehow and keep moving down the, down the river. Um, you know, game design challenges. Of course, you don't want it to be that, uh, you know, the pets that are stuck don't get rescued. That's terrible. <laughs> like, you get them where they die. That's nobody wants to play that game. Um, so, but you know, there's ways around that. You can say, okay, well, you know, you get X amount of points or money for every pet you rescue. Um, but then if, there, if there's some you leave behind, the rescue helicopter comes and gets them and charges you money for it. You're like, hey, you didn't do your job well. So I have to do it now. Well, uh, it could be interesting. Um, and and I, I really like, I, I don't see it as often as I used to. So, I mean, I, as I've mentioned, I'm old. <laughs> I've been playing video games literally since the 70s. Uh, Pong and the Atari 2600 and, and Space Invaders and all that stuff. I was born at just the right time to kind of hit all that stuff when I was a kid. And Star Wars and, and Space Invaders and the Atari 2600. The last couple of years of the 70s were bonkers. Um but one of the things I really liked about a lot of those games back then is it would go from one game mode into an entirely different one. Um, and that could be like Donkey Kong, where you've got a um, the first level, you're going up the, you know, uh, the beams or metal beams. And the second level is a completely different level. It looks totally different, and there's different goals. Now, you're not just trying to get to the top. Now, you've got to go and run over different things and capture them when you run over. And then when you run over all of them, Donkey Kong falls. And then the third level is like the first level again. And the fourth level is completely different. Now, that's as far as I ever got. Um, but Donkey Kong Jr., same thing. Uh, and of course, there's nothing wrong with a Pac-Man game where it's the same map forever. Uh, that was not my thing. I liked Miss Pac-Man more because different maps, um, you know, even though they repeated after a while. But I, I think in a lot of the arcade games and Atari games and things like that, um, Archon was a game that looked like chess but wasn't. But when two opposing pieces moved on to the same square, they would go and they would fight it out and you would have a mini game and, they, and each piece would have a special uh, kind of attack and you would have to defeat that opponent and some uh, um you know enemies were stronger against you or you were stronger against some kinds of enemies and things like that yeah i just i think so many games miss that and maybe it's just the the micro game world that we live in now and short attention span theater but i think I think that kind of thing needs to come back where you're playing one game and then maybe it switches to a different kind of game. You're still in the same game. So like in this case, you know, you get up to the roof and then you've got to go and chase down the pets, you know, and capture them with a net or a tranquilizer gun or something. Or occasionally maybe there's a monkey that, you know, jumps out and attacks you because he's from the zoo. He is not domesticated. You find that out the hard way. I don't know. Maybe the monkey steals your boat. Ooh, that's a good idea. I'm not that's going in the game um so that could be interesting um but having a micro game where you know you've got to chase the animals around um or you're driving the rescue helicopter and you've got to go and you've got to you know drop a, a cage on them and grab them to rescue them or something like that um i don't know you know there's a lot of different aspects that go into making a game that some of them um you just, it's, I won't say you can't, um, but it's really hard to make a good game just on paper. You've really got to put some things in there. You've got to try some stuff. You've just got to kind of see what can come of it. 
Um, these ideas all sound kind of fun in my head and I can picture what they would look like and I, I know how to make them. Um, but what does that all look like? You know, or, or is it fun? That's the question. I don't know. I made a game a long time ago, my first really big game with Unity. It's called Sparky the Road Clown. And a game about running over a clown or hitting him with the big spinning hammer on top of your car. Either one was fun because it would slow down right as you got up to him. Um, because my son did not and does not like clowns. Like much of the world, apparently. Anyway, uh, one of the mini games I wanted to put in there at the time, but I just did not have the skill to do, was to make it when you hit the clown and he goes flying, <laughs> that you could like swipe left or swipe right and you're trying to like you know bounce him off a billboard or something i thought that would be great fun you know or you're trying to land him the trampolines over here and you're trying to land him here not on the trampoline or something I don't know. um i i don't i don't uh, i don't dislike clowns people think i do but i don't i don't i, I don't care i mean you know john wayne casey nobody wants that guy but i mean you know um I'm not afraid of clowns. I made a game about running them over because I thought it was funny. Uh, still, still do. But um, just having a different kind of mini game that would trigger at a certain point and take you into something a little bit different. I think that's fun. I think uh, there's, I mean, just thinking about the um, all the mobile games I've played over the last decade or so. There's not a lot of games that kind of do that, that kind of, okay, now we go from, you know, gameplay type A into gameplay type B. I mean, yeah, okay, now you're in a cave and the scenery's different, but never the Donkey Kong where you've got one level this way and then you've got a different level. And then you go back to the first level and then you go back to a different level. And, you know, um, I think that's missing. I, I think more games need that kind of a thing where you've got... Uh, a different kind of gameplay and one of my current games um that is coming up at some point uh, not sure when i'll finish it and release it but uh rolling blocks is um you've got blocks you use the arrow keys or you know thumb pad on the uh, iphone or, or ipad to roll it around and land there uh, land the blocks. They all start out as white. And then when they hit the spot um, that they're supposed to, or any spot that's not taken yet, they take on the color from that spot that's supposed to be there. And it ends up making a little eight by eight um, uh, icon. And, um, but then once you finish the puzzle, then the whole puzzle goes, Roop, and then it goes into what I call the block playground. And you can click a block and it will randomly get bigger or smaller. And so they're all stacked and there's physics on so when it gets smaller other ones drop down or when it gets bigger they you know move out of the way and whether it gets a little bit bigger or a lot bigger and i think it made the scale go from like 0.2 to 1.3 or something like that so it could get like a little bit smaller or bigger or a lot smaller or, or big enough to you know kind of blow some things out of the way um and then once you're done with all that then you go on to the next level so I guess I'm already implementing this kind of a, a mini game kind of thing that, you know, um, I think that would be fun, but I'm looking forward to making the pet thing. I think that's probably the next thing I'm going to start on. Um, I love starting projects. It's easy and fun to start projects. It's a lot harder to finish them. Um, in programming, we talk about you've got the first 90% of the project and the last 90% of the project, because that last bit feels like that same kind of a marathon as the first 90% did a lot of times because there's so many things, so many little things you've got to finish up and all the things you've been putting off like documentation and tutorials and all that stuff. You just got, you got to do them. I mean, I don't think anybody starts their game by making a tutorial. I mean, that's how you start, should start playing one, but nobody makes them. I don't think. That would be weird. Uh, anyway, um, because again, a lot of times you just don't know what you're making until you make it. Um, but I mean, to me, that's kind of part of the fun of it. Um, and I'm gesturing a lot. I just looked at myself on YouTube. Blah, 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 and so that's that's distracting. Um, being in the background of like, I'm here. And then 30 seconds behind is me gesturing everywhere. Um so yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, because it looks like there's a few people, yeah, feel free to drop a comment, say hi. 
Um, let me know you're watching. Let me know if this has been interesting at all. If this is the kind of thing that you'd like to see more. I've thought about just doing a game dev coach show, almost like a, a long form podcast where I talk about games and talk about building games and get other people on, talk about that kind of thing. And I know there's some of that stuff out there, but you know, I would bring my own spin to it. Like I do everything, I guess, for better or worse. And um, okay, great. Um, sorry, I want to get a text from my wife. I need to see if it's important and it's nothing that can't wait. So yeah, um, I don't know. I do these uh, free calls, like I said, every once in a while, just to reset the room to use Clubhouse lingo. I do these free calls every so often. I may get back to doing them every week. I like doing them every, I like doing them. Um, I never know who's going to show up. I never know what they're going to ask about. I never know if I'm going to be able to help or not, but I'm here and willing to try, you know, um, I think that's the key. So many folks like that good teacher uh, that was just on, you know, my wife's a teacher. I, I've got, we've got a lot of friends that are teachers. I am very familiar with the struggle of the teacher and there's just not enough time to learn anything as well as they would like to. There's just not, there's so much, especially in this crazy year. Um, you know, and, and I didn't even ask if she was, you know, teaching in person or virtual or a mix of both, because I know people that are doing all three, um, you know, so I, I love helping teachers, especially because um, they're doing what they do because they want to see kids succeed. Um, I mean, I guess that's why I'm doing what I do. I want to see other people succeed. I want to see people bring their ideas to life. I've been doing this long enough where if I don't know exactly how to do something, either I can go ask somebody that's been doing it longer than me. And I, I know a handful of those folks who are awesome. Um, or I can go and um, I can usually figure it out. I can usually get most of the way there and, and get the rest of the way there. Being able to bring an idea to life, there's just nothing like that. And if you've watched my videos or listened to me much, I talk about that. I'll harp on that because there's, there's just nothing like it. Going from a name in my head, Sparky the Road Clown, to years later going, you know, okay, um, I think I think this could be a game where the clown is mocking you and you run over the clown. And that's a start. And then going through all the different stuff to learn, you know, car physics. Thankfully, having a very talented uh, a voice actor friend or a radio guy. And I was like, how's your angry clown voice? And he's like, I don't know. Let's find out. And another very talented friend that, uh, that, you know, built the clown started with sketches, um, colored in the sketches, made a 3d model, animated them, did the, did the car and big spinning hammer. I and mean, you can Google Sparky, the road clown, not rodeo road clown. And I uh, still find the trailers and stuff from 2011, 2012, somewhere in there. But, uh, you know, I, and I, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, there was not a lot of good Unity documentation at that time. There were some. Um, there were some groups and some email lists and stuff. If you went to the Unity conference, you met people and, and got in touch with people. Twitter was really useful at that point. Um, for connecting with other people with like-minded interests because that was uh, really hard to do otherwise. But when I started making games, um, when I was 8, 9, 10 years old, 11, 12, back in the early 80s, you were really lucky. You were really lucky if you had a computer. You were even more lucky if you knew somebody else that had a computer. You were extremely lucky if that person knew anything about programming. And you were insanely lucky if, you, if that person actually knew anything about making a game. Because I think of all the people that I knew with computers, which wasn't very many in my town of 70,000, I knew about 20. Um, one or two knew a little bit of programming, but they didn't do any game stuff. So, uh, you know, 
every time we go to a bookstore, I'd go look for, of course, they didn't have, you know, the computer section or, you know, technology like they do now. Usually they would be in the business section. You'd be like, you know, 101 games, you know, and it's in the business section because they, they didn't know where, where, where to put it, what to do with it. Um, I would get Family Computing Magazine and it'd be like five pages of stuff. You type it all in and run it to find out what it did. <laughs> You're like, I don't know what it's going to do, but I'm going to keep typing. Hope we'll get all these numbers right. And it would like make a pumpkin on your screen or something, you know, and they'd have your source code for Apple and your source code for the TRS-80, your source code for the, you know, Commodore 64. And um, it was neat though, you know, um, the technology was so new, but I could not find the help I needed when I needed it. I just had to figure it out on my own, stubbornly just keep banging on it, pressing forward, banging on it, pressing forward or give up. It's kind of the options. Today, it's the opposite problem. Today, there's so much information out there. There, You just get overwhelmed. You, you type, uh, how, how do I make a game? Or how do I make a game in Unity? You're going to get Udemy you know, advertisements for the next month and a half or year. Um, you're going to get YouTube ads, you're get Facebook ads, and all kinds of coding camps and stuff. And you go, well, which one do I pick? I don't know. Uh, you pick one, you hope it's good. You hope that they know what they're doing. You hope that they've been doing it long enough to actually be able to teach it. Um, uh, that whole, you only have to be one chapter ahead of the rest of the class to teach it. Uh, that can apply in some things, but I think, in, in especially in something like programming, you really need to be more than one chapter ahead of the group because you need to be able to articulate what to do, why to do it. So many people I see, they follow a YouTube video or a Udemy course, they get stuck and they don't know why and they don't know where to go for help. Uh, I had somebody sign up for the email list, said, I'm a teacher, I'm taking my students through a YouTube video, we're stuck, don't know how to fix it. I hate that. I'm going to try to set up a call with that person because there's a whole classroom of kids that want to learn how to make games and they can't because that YouTube video didn't describe it well, didn't talk about what it was doing. Maybe didn't, you know, mention that, oh, this is in Unity 3 or Unity 5 or Unity 2017 or some older version because you don't know. You just say, I'm looking for a Unity tutorial and whoever has the best search engine optimization rises to the top and you get their video whether it's actually relevant or not or useful or you know helpful or whether you actually learn enough to be able to go and apply that next time that's uh that's a much harder question and most of the time the answer is yeah no Take a drink of that. I'm going to switch drinks real quick and bring up the bigger water things. I've been talking for a while. Thank you to the people that are watching um, now and replay. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so uh, there's too much information now. I mean, that's why that's why I started my YouTube channel. Um, that's why I picked my YouTube channel back up after having been in a startup for a long time um, because I wanted to bring what I know to people. And that's not necessarily how to make a game. It's how to bring an idea to life. Because there's just nothing like that. To go from an idea in your head to the beginnings of a game to oh, some length of time later, now you've got a game. Now that you've got a game that you can hand your phone or your iPad to somebody else and say, here, I made this. Try this. It's so cool. There's nothing like that. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, and I guess making a movie is like that, sort of. But, I mean, you know, you can't, like, have the idea on, you know, well, I guess you could. I can get an idea, you know, early morning, and if I don't have anything going that day, I can sit down, I can build a simple prototype of it more often than not. I just don't have anything else like that. Um, other things just take so much longer. That's why I love using Unity. Unity is amazing. I could build my own game engine. I don't want to. I don't want to build a game engine. The people that do that are amazing. 
I don't want to make games. That's why I use Unity. So I've um, too much information, not enough good guidance is why I started this channel. That's why I, I've done uh, a year and a half ago, I did the five day game challenge where I taught um, six different games in five days. In retrospect, that was too much. I'm actually currently running a game dev boot camp. Um, you can go to thegamedevcoach.com forward slash boot camp and get details about that. Um, although we're currently two weeks into the current session, uh, I have not taken down signups yet. I don't, I'm not driving traffic to it, so I don't think anybody's going to sign up. And I guess if you really wanted to, you could and, and watch the existing videos because people that pay for it are going to have access to that stuff forever. Um, there's several people taking it that are still in school. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to penalize them for focusing on school work. Um, that would be ridiculous. So, you know, I, I guess if you do sign up, you'll have access like everybody else. But we've already got the first two weeks up. Um, we've got two more weeks coming up and then some other bonuses and stuff for them, which is going to be cool. Um, alternatively, on my How to Build Games channel, there is a playlist that is how to build a game in Unity and actually understand what you did and why you did it. Something like that. There's, it's there on the front page. Um, look at the playlist if you can't find it. Don't go to the old stuff from 2013, 2014. The big red and blue. Um, it's very outdated. Still gets a lot of hits. And that's cool. But it's very outdated. And if you follow those, you're going to end up coming away frustrated. But I mean, that's a great example. People are finding tutorials I did seven and eight years ago and trying to implement that stuff. I mean, like every week, every month, maybe every day, people are hitting those videos from 2013, 2014, how to build a 2D game in Unity, how to build a 3D game in Unity. And I've learned a significant amount since then, uh, both in terms of Unity, but also in terms of uh, what to do, what not to do. So, um, you know, I've got a boot camp. I've got a free course on a uh, free playlist. The boot camp covers more stuff in depth, and it also has uh, every week the boot camp is a lesson, which they've been about ninety minutes. And that's probably going to continue to be the case. And then we've got a follow up call on Zoom, where if anybody has any questions, they can come ask. Uh, if they don't, I've been showing off different projects of mine and some of the source code, and kind of showing some things in context and. Um, uh, it's been good. The free, I'm always going to make free content. I want free content. I've been in a place where I could not afford something, some kind of training that I really wanted. Um, I'm always going to have a free option of some sort, but at the same time, I'd like to be doing more of this. I'd like to be able to schedule free calls for people to teaching unity. Um, I'd like to schedule free calls for everybody else. Um, but you know, there, there are bills that have to be paid and, you know, Star Wars things that need to be bought, maybe. Um, need is subjective, I guess. Anyway, um, yeah, so, but I'm always going to have a free option, but I'm going to have a paid option too. Um, if you sign up on the Game Dev Help Call uh, page at thegamedevcoach.com, um, it's saying the next call is today. And of course, you know that because you're watching it. And, um, the, um, but that is the way to get notified of upcoming calls. And, um, those people also get notified when I'm going to do another boot camp. probably going to do it in March. I'm going to take a few weeks break this one will end in mid-february um i'll probably do it a little bit differently it will be more expensive next time it is i did i did a deal for the the early adopters um because i appreciate them and what they were doing um by supporting me um but uh yeah sign up for the free game dev calls at thegamedevcoach.com um I'm not sure when the next one will be, but you can still fill out the form and you'll get emailed. Usually it's short notice. I'm still trying to kind of work out a good schedule of this day and this time would, would work for a lot of people. 
you know, this time I gave five hours, six hours notice, um, posted in the groups. Um, I don't know, but you know, the more people that support me and what I do, the more I will be able to uh, kind of do these things, schedule these things in advance. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, most of an hour talking to myself is a lot, but I mean, I'm not talking to myself. Well, I, I am, but I'm not. I'm talking to you, the viewer. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this has been interesting at the very least. I hope it's been informative. Um, hit that subscribe button and the bell if you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel. I had to build games channel and want to be and want to be notified when things come up. Um, go to the game dev, the game dev coach.com forward slash. That's it. It's the game dev coach.com uh, with or without the forward slash to sign up for the email list to get notified when these calls happen. Go to the game dev coach.com forward slash boot camp. If you want to see details of what I'm teaching in the middle of, and I guess you could sign up if you wanted to. You'd have to some catching up to do, but um, you know, it's fine. Um, but I guarantee it's better content than a lot of what, if you just go buy random YouTube videos or Udemy classes and try to put them all together and learn, um, and try to apply that to your own project. Cause I'm, I'm teaching people how to do things and then showing it in not just one example, but several. So they kind of see the underlying stuff. If you just do something once, that's cool, but you're not going to be able to kind of understand the things that make it happen the way you will if you do something several times, especially if you kind of do this thing. And then from that, we're going to build this thing. And then from that, we're going to build this other thing. That's why all my stuff going forward will eventually be. Um, and that's the boot camp stuff. That's the free YouTube playlist on how to make a game and actually understand what you did, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go ahead and shut down the YouTube stream now, but apparently I cannot do that over there. So thanks for watching YouTube. We'll catch you next time. I'm Greg Dunn. I am the 